going to try to be brief, Mr. Speaker, but I want to just address a couple of, of the points that have been made either publicly or privately, internally, as we've kind of been feeling out what the what the action, the result of this bill today is going to be. And, um, you know, and, it, it, you know, and I remember that, um, you know, Mark Twain wrote that a lie can make its way halfway around the world while the truth is pulling at its shoes. So I want to just very quickly not just pull on the shoes, but take the shoes off of what I think are the two most fundamental either lies and or misconceptions that are used as the basis for those that may be voting against this bill to try to logically justify that, that no vote. The first one is that somehow the passage of this bill is aiding and abetting the federal government's total lack of order on the issue of immigration. Now, obviously, we know that that's not the case, and I'm not even going to try to replicate the passion and or the argument that Representative Wood made on that point already, that the issue of immigration has been completely fumbled by the federal government, but that the state of Florida does its own thing as a result of it. We should not allow the victims of that failure of the federal government to, um, to be um, these children that we're talking about having access to higher education. The second point um, that I've heard either both publicly and or internally in this in this chamber either in committees or just as we're vetting out what the action of this bill is going to be is the misapplication of the word stipend as if somehow tuition um, is, is is a is a subsidy i mean um just i'll address that in two ways one is going to be a little wonky the concept of tuition as a subsidy is just completely misapplied the structure, the way that we budget, and the way that we fund state universities have two components to it. They have state funding, and then embedded into that equation so that we know what total funding is for the universities, we have the application of tuition. The same way that in the K-12 system, we have the state's contribution and we have the required local effort that's actually based on property taxes, which I could actually say is more of a subsidy perhaps than not, because not everybody that actually utilizes that system pays property taxes. In the state university system, our way of budgeting for it applies state funding and then a portion of skin in the game, which is what tuition is. It's not a subsidy, it is an application of budgeting. So it's wrong off that point right away. But the, the more dangerous point of calling tuition just by factually it being wrong as a subsidy is that the population that we're talking about in this bill is a population that very often to this day and as representative Combe mentioned earlier serves in our armed forces so would you dare to call the paycheck that we give that same uh, person same characteristic of the students we're talking about right now that joins our armed forces, would you consider that paycheck a, stipe, uh, a subsidy? I think that's insulting and it's a dangerous road to take logically. So then what's left? If both of those points cannot be argued logically and that as a justification for your no vote, then the only thing that could possibly be left is fear. Either fear of your district or fear some self-appointed group that's the litmus test for what a conservative is or what a conservative is not or just fear of backlash or fear of not being able to explain to your constituency what this bill was and that it's not what they think it did. And to those, particularly in my caucus, that perhaps may be functioning on that fear, I would say it, I, I, it disappoints me only because we might as well throw in the towel for 2016 and now I'm only talking to my caucus because I'll speak for myself and I know I speak for some others, one person in particular who I hope is our nominee is our nominee for president of the Republican Party in 2016, he's going to be defending this in your districts and in districts all throughout the country because it's the right thing to do. So when you're acting on that, please remember that history will always be able to clear the actual result of what you're doing much more than the fear of today. And, and what I'll ask you is, as you're applying that, and be right before you press that button, if you're thinking of pressing your button, no. Just remember that without self-examination, without self-questioning, without rigorously and fiercely questioning your own beliefs and your own, self, and, and, and your own preconceptions, it's impossible to ever change the beliefs and the preconceptions of society as a whole. So I ask you to please have that courage if all you have left is fear, to vote no, have the courage to dismiss that fear, vote yes, and do the right thing for the state of Florida. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.